In this video, we're going to be discussing what was the best cat engine ever made, as well as two destruction of the weeks. Hey guys, Josh with the Adept Ape channel. In this video, we're going to be discussing what are the best engines that cat ever made. Now, I'm going to be focusing on the electronic truck engines. Now, this could include RV and bus engines, of course, but we're not going to be looking at older stuff. We're not going to be looking at 3500 series giant engines. We're not going to be looking at 1693s and really the mechanical engines. We're going to be focusing on the electronic ones. Also, I'm not going to be picking one engine. I'm going to be covering medium duty, the lighter heavy duty, and then the heavy duty, of course, like C15, 15 liter engines. So let's get into the video. So let's start off this match of what is the best CAT diesel engine with the medium duty. There's no light duty according to CAT in their hierarchy. It's basically medium duty and heavy duty. So medium duty would be the smaller engines, 3126s, C9, C7s. Heavy duty would be C12, C13, C15. So let's discuss medium duty first. Let's identify the engines we're going to be talking about here. We're going to be talking about the 3116, the 3126, the C7, the C7S, the C9, and the C9S, okay? We'll start off the medium duties by talking about the 3116, which is actually a mechanical engine, but it's the base for the 3126 and the C7. It was fully mechanical with an internal rack. It had various problems to this rack, the rack being very complicated to set up and adjust. This is a 3116 that needs a rebuild. Very high blow by here. Push rod engine, problems replacing the injectors due to specialty tooling and the copper cups that had to be reamed made it hard to work on as a mechanic or owner. Which then led to the 3126, which was made for several years Great engine in general. Switched to a Huey type fuel system with electronic unit injectors. Got rid of the copper cups. Swapped them over for steel cups, which are replaceable. Also, has a three valve design in the head. Two intake valves, single exhaust valve. This would remain the same through the 3126 and the C7. You can see it here a little bit better. You can see the two smaller valves with the valve bridge or the intake valves. And this is actually a C7S, but the valve train is pretty much exactly the same between the 3126, the C7, and the C7S, all pushrod engines. Now, the 3126 was a Huey system, and the early ones had a round top Huey pump on the 3126Bs. It later switched to the more widely available square top on the C7s and the later 3126s. The round tops, however, were more robust, had less problems, and they had an external driver that allowed the driver itself to be changed without changing the whole pump, unlike the later square top style you're seeing here. When they failed, you would have to change out the, Hue the entire Huey pump, as well as usually have to change the injectors due to metal contamination in the Huey rail. That's the main problems on these smaller engines, is the Huey system itself. What you're looking at here is a 3126 injector with a square top head. These are generally cheaper than the C7 injectors and usually had less problems. You can see the C7 style Huey injectors here, with the updated one being on top with a metal screen over the fuel inlet to help keep it safe from metal contamination. This then led to the C7S, which you see here. This had an EGR system, art head, common rail, variable geometry turbo. These are, without a doubt, the worst of all the medium duty engines. They have a lot of problems with the regen system, the variable geometry turbos, even the common rail system fails a lot. These are probably the worst of these systems. Also, none of these have replaceable liners. Now, Getting to the C9, which is a different block, but shares many of the similarities between the 3126 and the C7. The normal C9 uses the same front crank seal design. It uses the pretty much the same water pump design. It uses a Huey system. However, the C9 makes a lot more power due to its displacement difference. Also, it has 
removable liners, so it can be rebuilt without replacing or repairing the block. Now, this then led to the C9S, which you're seeing here. This is also a common rail system. It uses a variable geometry turbo, and it has the art head and the EGR system. You don't see many C9s or C9Ss, however. They were mostly an RV engine. So while good engines, they're fairly hard to find. They're almost never in trucks, pretty much solely being in RVs. Now, if you have one in an RV, outside of the C9S, it is a good engine. So what is the best medium-duty CAD engine, in my opinion? The 3126B, typically with an 8YL serial number. However, there's a CKM and HEP serial number designation as well. These engines are plentiful, cheaper, and more reliable, in my opinion, than the C7. They're also slightly easier to work on. So the next series we're going to be talking about is the heavy-duty side now. I'm going to be differentiating between the 15 liters and all of the other heavy-duty engines Cat made. So before we talk about the 15 liters, let's talk about the smaller heavy-duty engines. What do I mean by these? I mean the 3176, the C10, the C12, the C11, the C13, and the C13 Regen engine. Starting with the 3176, which I don't have any footage of because I've only seen two of them in my eight years in the truck shop, it is the precursor for the C10 and the C12 and shares many of its designs. However, it's fairly rare to find one still in operation outside of a few RVs and trucks still running them. So let's get into the C10 and C12, which while similar are better in my opinion than the 3176. The C10 and the C12 engines are basically brother and sister they share almost all the same components outside of the displacement you can see this c12 particularly had some coolant in the oil and this while not super common on these engines is usually one of the failure points for them it is a cracked head causing coolant in the oil these are inline six engines of course they're push rod designs they're electronic unit injectors and this design would remain the same between the c12 and the c13 the C10 C12s had three valve covers. They used a single camshaft that was located in the block. Here's a C12 with no coolant contamination in the oil. They have an odd design with the intake and the exhaust valve swapping from cylinder to cylinder with the intake valves being closer together and the exhaust valves being further apart on cylinders one and two, three and four, and five and six. This would change when it went to the C13 and C11. You can see with the head removed, the lifters here, which bolt under the cylinder head. This design is one of the other problems that these engine designs have. The camshafts will usually fail before the engine is worn out. Now, this is also a C13 picture here, and you can see the cylinder pack design. These have removable liners. One downside is though, they only have one liner seal. And sometimes those liner seals can leak, and in that case, you would have to pull the cylinder packs out, usually replace them, but if they're still in good condition, you could just reseal them. Here is a camshaft from a C12, and you can see that it has worn right through the cam lobe. This is what I'm talking about. This is one of the failure points. Now, the C10 and C12 are much simpler than the C11 and C13 because... On the C13s and the C11s, they switched to a twin-turbo design. Now, I've never seen a blown head gasket on any of these engines, except I have seen a lot of cracked heads. The heads will typically crack on these if you get them over about 230 degrees for an extended period. Now, the twin-turbo design obviously makes it more complicated. It also added intake valve actuators to the overhead. It also added a pre-cooler. So... This is only on the C11s and C13s. Now you can see the pre-cooler there. It added some hoses, a coolant diverter valve. Basically, it made it more complicated. Now, this is an ACERT engine, but it's a non-regen ACERT engine. When they went to the full regen, they added a DPF. They added an EGR system, which they called CGI. They also added the not everyone's favorite art head, which is about $1,000 and needs replaced about every year. So what's the best of these engines in my opinion? The C12. Much simpler than its brother the C13 and still readily plentiful and easy to find parts for. Good reliable engine. Now getting into the part of the video that probably everyone was waiting for. The heavy duty. The C15s. The 3406Es. 
the twin turbo Acer engines. Which of these is the best? Let's get into it. Now, starting with the 3406E, it has pretty much the same design as the C15 and the Acer C15. However, these are 14.6 liter engines and the twin turbos are 15.2 liter engines. They all use basically the same block and head outside of the liners are a little bigger on the Acer engines, the twin turbo ones. Now, the older 3406Es, some of them had these, which are a holdover from the 3406B. This is a block strengthener plate that goes between the oil pan and the cylinder block. The later ones had a block strengthener plate, but it didn't go between the oil pan. Now, notice the dash between the C15. This is very important. If your engine is a C-15, it's basically just a 3406E with some updated valve covers and usually no block strengthener plate. These are probably some of the best engines. Now, you can see this is an overhead cam design. That being said, they use a cam actuated injector, electronic unit injector. They have two intake, two exhaust valves. This is the same on all of these engines. Now, these engines share many of the same problems as well. One of those being oil leaks. Oil leaks around the spacer plate are very common on these engines. This area also gives us a very common problem on these blown head gaskets. The liners, since they sit on the cast iron block, will wear into the block and the liner will sink. This can cause a head gasket to blow out. Now, when they switched to the twin turbo design, the Acerts, they had another problem as well. These would break the bolts that hold the rocker arms down. This could then break the rocker arm shafts and the IVA and Jake housings, which are obviously very expensive. Sometimes the bolts would get stuck in the head, and if not removed, could damage the head. This would, of course, mean you'd need a new cylinder head, but many of the times you could get the bolts out. You can see the wear caused by the bolts being loose and wearing into the head here. These components obviously need replaced. So what's the best engine? Of course, it is the 6NZ C-15. Now it's time for a little segment I like to call... Speaking of C-15s, we have an Acert C-15 head gasket here, and you can see it seems to be missing a piece. This is caused by the liner sinking. It has blown out the firing on number one. This will mean the liners will need removed and counterbores cut, and obviously a new head gasket. Now we have two in this week because we have this turbo here, which seems to be a little bit more uh, loose than some of the other ones. You can see that it's pretty much just stripped off all the veins on this cartridge and needs replaced. Now we found something quite odd about this turbo. In the oil supply line here, we seem to have some sort of coinage. Uh, this appears to be a penny. Now, whoever put that there, hopefully put it after it failed, which would cause them to lose less oil while they're driving. Hope you enjoyed the video.